Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And tonight's video is a little bit different type video than I normally do. I normally don't uh, talk about products or softwares or endorse a product. And nobody's asked me to endorse this. I've just, uh, it's such a neat product, I thought I'd let you know. I've been using this product called Boxit for about five years now. And I use it all the time, and I've used it on several projects. And instead of just making decorative stuff, you can actually make useful items and boxes. But it's made by a product a company called Laser Jumpstart. Their website is laserjumpstart.com. And they make several uh, softwares, all for the laser engraving industry. But tonight, I'm just going to talk about Boxit. And so here we're going to go, and I'm going to show you how, how easy it is. I've got my icons just kind of floating tonight. And I'm going to start with a 2 inch by 2 inch box. And I just drew that out. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. Go over this Boxit icon and hit Boxit. Now you're going to come up with some variables. Your thickness of your material. And that's going to determine what box is going to do. It's going to make finger joints. And this is going to be the length of the joint sticking out past your wood on the sides. So this is eighth. I'm going to, you know, be using eighth inch plywood. So I'm going to use, you know, 1.25, which is eighth inch. But be forewarned that all eighth inch plywoods or all eighth inch woods aren't equal. You know, you're going to buy some and then in the same batch, you're going to have some that's 0.11 or 0.14 even. Now, if you're using something like alder where you want your edges to be equal, you want to kind of test that first. On a plywood that you could sand off the, if your material was sticking out a little bit too far on the fingers, you could actually sand those off. The other variable is the curve. I think the factory default is 0 .004. And you might find that, that with your particular laser, that might be a little bit too tight. Because these joints are so well precise cut that when you put them together, they might be too tight to put together. So you can change this and make it 0 .005 or 0 .006. And that's something you can test. And I'll show you in a little bit later in the video how you could test that. This is going to be your tab width, which is going to basically tell you how many tabs you could put on the sides. And so you could use this or you could use a quarter of an inch, you know, 0.25 or 0.5. On a really big item that's, you know, 18 by 18, you could actually use one inch, you know, cut one inch tabs. The only other variable is the box height. And we're going to leave this at two. And so our, we're going to end up with a cube that's two by two. You can have a lid or not a lid. You can have a bottom or not a bottom. And all you have to do is check none. And what that's going to do, it'll leave you a clean edge for non-bottom. We want a bottom on this. Now you can, I think default is going to label your part. So we're going to do this real quick. And it's going to label our parts. And I might be a little wrong here because it's it's making these cut lines a hairline so they would actually cut out. And on this small of a box where there's only four sides, you don't need it labeled. It's only going to fit together one way. These two sides are the same, these two sides are the same. So three and three and one are the exact same copy. So they go opposite. So you don't really need that label. So we're going to back up here. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. But we're going to go box it again. And this time we're going to go, I don't need the parts labeled. So it's going to draw out the box. Now this very first top box you don't need because that was your original drawing. So you could delete it. But then these pieces are going to fit together. So here's your top and your bottom, but they're equal. So it doesn't matter which one's which. And you can see your two sides are a little bit different where this tab 
where you can just see it right here where that tab is going to fit inside the DAT tab. Now, when you buy Boxit, it comes with a, uh, quite a few projects. They've got some that are very easy like this one. They've got some intermediate, intermediate ones and they've got some difficult ones. I actually drew out the whole state of Texas and made a box out of it. And uh, somehow I don't have a picture of it. I sold it or gave it away. But in this particular box, it's you, you're making two boxes and one of them slips over the other box. The, the bottom box has a bottom edge and there's another box built inside of here that actually would hold your roll of stamp. The top box doesn't have a bottom and it'll actually slip over. So here's what it looks like if you cut it out and it's already drawn for you. It's already They've already got the slot. You could change your, you know, that's one thing you need about box it. You could write on any side. You could, you know, engrave and you could change that font. Um, you could put anything you want. You could put U.S. Post Office stamps. But here's what I'm saying. This is the bottom and these are your bottom pieces. So it, it didn't make a top so it's flush. These two tabs fit in these two tabs. These are these two are the same, but you can see how that one's going to fit in there. And then here's your top of your box and your four sides, but it doesn't have a bottom. So it's going to slip over and fit on that edge. Now, they make some really uh, interesting parts. And this is where labeling your product would help you. If you were going to cut out this E, <clears throat> this one you don't need. This is your original, but it's going to tell you, you know, that there's A12. And A12 goes in the A12 spot. It would save you a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, where that goes. So there, there's where labeling can help you. But they've already drawn this box, and I think it even comes, well, I know it does. It comes in the project deal, but it, it looks like a shadow box effect. It's It would probably be in a difficult one because the edges are tapered in and outward. Um it's made out of two different colored woods to stand out. They did it for epilogue and they they use it at their shows uh, to show what Boxer can do and, and what they can do. And here's some projects I've made. Um, if you've never seen my video of my Ferris wheel, go to Doug Green Ferris wheel or Doug Green Merry-Go-Round and you'll see this. But I made a switch box to hold the switch so it'd be all wood. And this is what's so neat about Boxit. You can, you know, engrave a line and engrave a nail hole and make it actually look like planks of wood. You know, I actually cut a uh, a grate so people could wipe their feet off. Here's the um, here's the three things I use for Boxit. To um, this covers up the transformer. Here's a clock I made, and this is so easy. This is eighth inch plywood. And this particular one, I, I cut this out and then I backed it up with a piece of wood that painted blue. So it shows through. This is a full to represent the ocean on the curvature of the clock. But these are two bays down in Rockport, Texas. <clears throat> but what I did, finger joints in woodworking, this is what these are called finger joints. They're one of the strongest joints there is. But what I did on this particular clock, on the back side, I cut out the middle. This is a 12 by 12 clock. So I made a cutout of 11 by 11 so I can get inside the box even after it's glued together. But you could, and going back to these are so tight, you could snap all this together. Maybe lightly use some little bitty clamps. I use uh, surgical tubing, which is like a big rubber band that you could wrap around and hold it. But then you could take a glue brush and just lightly brush the inside of the box, the glue's not going to run out and it's going to hold the box. And then you could glue the back on by actually putting a little glue on the finger joints. And then like this particular project I made several months ago, I used box it for the whole thing. But then I covered up the, the tabs. I didn't want the, the uh, finger joints showing, but it helped me. There's actually joints behind these pieces of wood. So I indexed them with dowels and covered them up and I just cut the next piece to the outside of the, of the edge of the box it and I left the bottom showing so all 
four pieces in the bottom just kind of snap together. And then I've got something on the inside just to hold them together. And that's how tight they fit. I've made Kleenex boxes uh, or tissue boxes out of different colored woods. And it's so easy. I mean, on this particular one, I, I told it, no, don't cut a bottom. So I've got a flat edge. And then I was able to cut a hole for that. Now, with all that being said, they make other project, other products, uh, even inside a box that there's cart in it where you could cut out something with cardboard. I'm not going to get into that. They make a cube in a box where it looks 3D. They actually make a pedestal. So you could, you could take this same square and go to pedestal. And I'm not going to go over all the parameters, but then get rid of your original box. Get rid of your original box. Well, and so you can see how the wood's tapered in. Now, this would be where it would be important because you're not going to get an exact clean joint because this piece of wood's going to be at an angle, but you could sand it and it would look flush. So they make that. They make a couple of things that I've never even played with. Uh, shadow box and anyway. Now, getting back to this real quick, if, let's go back to our little two-inch box. And let's say, so when you're cutting this out for the first time to find out what kerf you need for your laser, you could, you don't need this piece anymore, but you could, Put these two pieces, you know, up here. And, well, let's do this. Let's just move them up here. <clears throat> and now you could cut this out, out of alder. And, and the piece is only 2 inches by 13 inches. You haven't really wasted that much wood if your test didn't work. Now, they're always going to fit. You know, they if they're too tight, you could press them together. If they're too loose... You can glue them together, but you can play around with that kerf and make them perfect. But what I suggest, let's say these pieces are six inches by six inches or 12 inches by 12 inches, and you're going to cut them out of plywood. You don't need to waste that much plywood. Basically, all you need to do is test these joints right here. So I have found, and I've made another video about this, the way to test this would just be to grab your rectangle tool and you could do these two joints. You really only need that joint. Draw you a box around it. Take your virtual segment delete key and just delete this. Delete this. Take another rectangle. Delete this. Delete this. Now, when you, you're actually, then you could group this together and, you know, move it closer. Then you could cut out those two pieces of wood that are only going to cost you, you know, not even an inch by a little bit more than a half of an inch. And you could test these two joints. And you could visually kind of see if it works or not because the laser is going to take away wood. So that's how close this is going to work. When that takes away that wood, those two joints are probably going to fit perfectly. So instead of wasting, you know, big sheets of wood on your first project, and pretty much once you've got your kerf done, you're done. Now this would be another way you could test your thickness of your wood. When you put these two joints together and you would put them where this is at a right angle to this piece, you could see if you're, Thickness is, is good enough, but it's a, it's a great product. Uh, I use it. I've used it several times. Uh, they've got some good projects in there. And, um, anyway, go to their website, check them out. Pretty neat product. I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.